Do you need a NAS? Which NAS should you get? How do you set it up? And what can you do with it? If you're new here, my name is Jason. I'm a video editor and a drone pilot. So I need a storage solution with enough capacity to store all my files and is fast enough to edit from. That's where this comes in. This is the Ugreen DXP 6800 Pro. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. You might be using cloud storage services and local hard drives to store your video files and family photos, maybe to back up your phone and maybe to back up your computers. But as time goes by and you store more and more data, those monthly fees really start to creep up on you. And admit it, it's super disorganized to have your files in all these different locations, especially when you're trying to be diligent about your backups. And if you need high transfer speeds, you need SSDs, which get real expensive real fast. A NAS works just like a cloud service, so you can access your files everywhere, but there are no monthly fees because you own the cloud. So you're only limited by the size of the drives that you invest in. And this DXP 6800 Pro has 10 gigabit networking and Thunderbolt 4 ports, so it's crazy fast. When choosing a NAS, it's really important to plan your investment. You don't have to break the bank, but you should think about your future storage needs and invest in a system with enough drive bays and choose large enough hard drives. You don't have to populate all those drive bays on day one. And if you're on a budget, you can do RAM upgrades or add NVMe drives later, but you can't increase the capacity of the drives once your RAID is set up and you can't add bays without buying a whole new system. I prefer a larger system so I can add drives as my storage needs grow. And you can also use those extra bays for things like a hot spare, so your RAID can rebuild itself automatically when you're away. Or you can drop in an old drive you might already have laying around, or maybe you could use some 2.5 inch SSDs to build another RAID array with faster, quieter SSD storage. These NAS devices come with 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit network ports. Just remember that for every 1000 megabits or every one gigabit per second, you'll get about 125 megabytes per second of potential network speed. So 2.5 gigabit networking will theoretically give you about 300 megabytes per second. 5 gigabit networking will give you about 600 megabytes per second. And 10 gigabit networking will give you about 1200 megabytes per second. Keep in mind that these numbers are theoretical because there's always some overhead and you might be limited by the cables, switches, adapters, or routers that you have at home. We'll dive deeper into how to get those fast transfer speeds in just a minute. The processors and ports on these systems also vary with price. If you plan to run virtual machines or do a lot of transcoding, for example, if you want to run a Plex media server, you might value a little bit more capable processor with better onboard graphics. I have the DXP 6800 Pro, which has six traditional drive bays that can take up to 30 terabyte drives, two bays for NVMe drives, which can take up to eight terabyte disks, for an insane total of 196 terabytes if you were to populate it with the largest drives available. It's also got a powerful 10 core i5 processor, loads of super fast connectivity, including two gigabit network ports, two USB 3.2 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an 8K HDMI port, and a super fast SD 4.0 SD card reader. It ships with eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which can be maxed out to 64 gigs. I've already maxed mine out to 64 gigs. If you're deciding between the DXP 6800 Pro and the DXP 4800 Plus, the DXP 6800 Pro is basically bigger and more powerful in every way. And I love having those Thunderbolt ports. As a video editor, I want the fastest speeds possible and this bigger, more capable system gives me room to grow and it's much more future-proof. And if you want a six-base system, but the DXP 6800 Pro is a little too much for you, Ugreen also has the DXP 6800 Plus, which has an i3 instead of an i5, 
USB 3.2 instead of Thunderbolt, and just one gigabit ethernet port instead of two. It's a pretty solid value if you want those extra bays without breaking the bank. The hard drive bays click open when you press the lower part of the bay door, and they pull right out of the system. You can lock the trays with the included keys or a flat screwdriver so you don't accidentally take them out while they're in operation. The caddies are toolless and they have a quick release locking mechanism. Just place your drives into the tray, make sure the rubber knobs are lined up with the mounting holes on your drive, and then slide the tray in place until it clicks to lock. Then slide the drive into the system. If you're installing NVMe drives or upgrading the RAM, you do that by removing the hatch underneath the NAS. I chose to set up and test my system first before upgrading the RAM or adding NVMEs because that way, if there's a problem, it's easier to troubleshoot. This process is super straightforward. No advanced IT knowledge is required and the included manual has detailed step-by-step -step instructions if you need them. Where you decide to place your NAS is gonna be very important because it'll determine how you connect to it. If you're using the router your internet service provider gave you, just remember that it's probably got one gigabit networking, and if you just need one computer to connect at a time like I do, you can just connect your computer directly to one of the ethernet ports on the NAS itself. Maybe your computer already has a fast ethernet port, but if it doesn't, you can get a 10 gigabit adapter on Amazon for a little over hundred bucks, or a five gigabit adapter for around 30 or $40. I'm using a 5 gigabit adapter to connect to my NAS right now because it's a cost effective solution and because my DXP6800 Pro has the option to connect over Thunderbolt, which is crazy fast and that's how I plan to connect to my NAS. After your drives are installed, you can power up your system. Go to the Ugreen website and download the desktop client for your operating system. You can also do this from a phone by downloading the Ugreen app. In the desktop client, Select new device registration and there's a wizard which will find your NAS on your local network and walk you through the process of creating a Ugreen account. I was prompted to upgrade my NAS to the latest version of UGOS, the Ugreen NAS operating system, and once I got the UGOS updated, I was prompted to create a storage pool. There's a wizard which walks you through it and it's very simple. Just select the drives you want to use. I'm populating five of the drive bays with these eight terabyte Western Digital RAID Plus drives, and I'm going with RAID 5, which gives me one drive failure tolerance and 29 terabytes of usable space after the drives have been formatted and the RAID magic has been done. And I do back up my NAS regularly. Remember that RAID is like a safety net, but it's not a backup, and you should always back up your NAS. We'll talk about how you can do that with the Backup and Sync app in just a minute. Then you have the option to do a disk check, which will check your disk for errors, but it will take a little longer. I did choose this option because my disks are brand new, and if there are any errors, I want to know about it now while they're still under warranty. Then you choose between ext4 or btrfs file systems. If you're not familiar with those words, just choose btrfs because it's a more modern file system with snapshot support and more data integrity features. If you need a coffee break or you have to go mow the lawn or something, now's a good time because it'll take a while to build your RAID. Mine took about 12 hours. Now that my RAID is built, I'll walk you through some of the basic settings in UGOS. In the control panel, under hardware and power, you can fine tune the system by controlling fan speed, performance versus efficiency, and even the brightness of the LEDs under control panel, hardware and power, power management. There's a very cool feature under power that I like to use, which is to schedule the device to shut down and start up at certain times when I know I won't be using it. This helps save power and it reduces wear and tear on your hard drives. And it also prevents the system from being exposed online when it's not even being used. Under hard disk sleep, you can tell the system to make the hard disks go to sleep after a certain period of inactivity, which will save power and reduce wear and tear on the disks. This does apply to both the internal drives and external USB drives. To make your system accessible on your network so you can see it in Finder or Explorer, you need to enable SMB. In the control panel, under file service, 
click Enable SMB Service. Then you should see your Ugreen NAS in the Finder or File Explorer. In order to access your storage, you need to create some folders. Under the Files app, you have the option to create personal or shared folders and control how they're accessed. One very cool feature of UGOS is that it's super easy to share files or folders with other people over the internet, just like you would with a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive. You just right click on the file or folder and set some basic permissions. This is super useful for large files like videos that are too big to email. I used to do this with Dropbox all the time, but now I just do it with my NAS and I don't have to worry about those monthly fees. Under Control Panel, Users, you can add users and limit what they'll be able to access. For example, you might want to give read-only access to a client or a work colleague to a certain folder on your NAS, and you might want to give a family member full read and write access to other folders on the NAS. You can even invite users via QR code, which could be super useful for collaborating or sharing work. The most convenient way to access your NAS is through Ugreen Link, which allows you to remotely connect to your NAS using an easy to remember name instead of an IP address. You'll be prompted to set up a Ugreen Link ID during the setup process, and if you need to make any changes, you do that through Control Panel, Device Connection. You'll want to secure your NAS by changing a few security settings under Control Panel, Security. You can fine tune things like automatically logging users out after a certain period of inactivity, automatically blocking IP addresses after a certain number of failed login attempts, you can blacklist or whitelist IP addresses, and you can enable protection from DOS attacks. You can also enable two-factor authentication which will require your users to use an authenticator app like Google Authenticator to log in. One of the most important apps is the Sync and Backup app. This will allow you to backup your NAS or just certain folders on your NAS or on your local computer or to synchronize folders between your computer and your NAS. One way I use this app is to keep my active projects synchronized so I can access them from anywhere and I know that all of my work is being backed up in real time. Another way I use this app is to back up the critical data from my NAS to an external drive like this. You can use any external drive you have laying around and if your NAS is huge and if your drive isn't big enough, you can use multiple drives by setting up different backup tasks. You can choose to do incremental backups or a single version image, and you can have it run automatically on a schedule. Remember that your RAID is a safety net for your data, but it's not a backup. If you value your data, you need to back up your NAS, and this app makes it super easy to do that. Another app that you'll wanna use is the Photos app. It automatically categorizes your photos by date and location, and you can easily share photos or albums with people with just a click. You can create just normal photo albums or conditional albums, which will categorize your photos automatically, or baby albums where you identify a child, set its age, and the app will highlight important milestones automatically. It's a pretty cool feature, and it's similar to the automatic memories that you see in other photos apps. But here's where it gets really cool. Under Settings, Intelligent, you can download and run local AI models to make the app smarter. So it can do things like recognize people, text, pets, or whatever. It's pretty cool because after you download some of these models, the search function gets really smart. Before I installed these models, it wouldn't recognize basic words like dog. But after installing a few models, that search got super smart. Remember that other photo services do this by sending your data over the internet and these Ugreen models are all executed on your local system. So they do consume some processing power, but all your data stays with you. It's not being sent over the internet to fetch those responses. The Photos app also works great within the mobile app, and you can automatically back up the photos from your phone to your NAS. It works great and it's completely seamless. Once you set it up, you just forget it's there. If you're paying for cloud storage to store your photos, this is another way that a Ugreen NAS system can really save you money over the long term.
Now let's talk about transfer speeds, and I'm gonna show you how my NAS performed out of the box and with some upgrades to optimize my transfer speeds. When I'm connected to my 2.5 gigabit home network, I got about 250 megabytes a second write speed and 220 megabytes a second read speed. Then I upgraded the RAM with this crucial 64 gigabyte RAM kit. I chose to max out the RAM in my system right off the bat because more RAM will boost read and write speeds because the system uses it as a buffer. It's basically pre-writing the data to the cache. You'll see how that works in just a second. After my RAM upgrade, I was hitting 260 megabytes a second write speed and around 260 megabytes a second read speeds because my home network is 2.5 gigabit and I have some overhead somewhere. When I connected directly to the 10 gigabit port on my NAS with a CAT7 cable, I got over 460 megabytes a second write speeds and over 490 megabytes a second read speed. And this time I'm bumping up against the limitation of my five gigabit network adapter. But these speeds are higher than what you would expect from my Western Digital Red drives. So we are starting to see the benefits of that RAM upgrade. Then I connected to one of my Thunderbolt 4 ports and I got 1,480 megabytes per second write speeds and 1,840 megabytes per second read speeds. Now we can really see the benefit of that RAM upgrade because a RAID array made up of spinning disks is never gonna be able to reach those speeds. It basically makes your RAID read and write as if it were one giant SSD. Now I added a two terabyte Western Digital Gen 4 NVMe drive and I was able to get 1,515 megabytes a second write speed and 1,950 megabytes a second read speeds. I transferred a 10 gigabyte test file from my computer to my NAS in about five seconds. That's insane. To put that into perspective, if you're using a cloud service with a five megabit per second upload speed, it would take three hours, 45 minutes to upload that file to the cloud. With a 20 megabit per second upload speed, it would take almost two hours. And with a 100 megabit per second upload speed, it would still take about 14 minutes. For a video editor, having Thunderbolt 4 ports so you can take advantage of those speeds to edit right from the NAS is a huge benefit. And for me, that's the value of the DXP 6800 Pro over other NAS systems that are out there. Another huge advantage for me is the Ugreen app. I'm coming from a Synology system, which has a separate mobile app for each app on the NAS, which is confusing and it's kind of a pain to maintain security and logins for so many different apps. With the Ugreen app, you can see all your critical system settings and interact with any of the apps like the Photos app or the Music app right from a single console. After using it for a little while, it becomes incredibly intuitive and I definitely won't be going back to Synology. What do you guys think about the DXP 6800 Pro? Do you prefer the DXP 4800 Plus or is the faster processor, the extra 10 gigabit network port and the Thunderbolt 4 ports worth it to you? Let me know what you guys think of this system and if you want to check pricing, I do have links to this and other NAS systems down in the video notes. Please make sure to subscribe before you go because I want you here for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.